Greetings and welcome. I'm Dave, the AI Wizard, and today we're going to run through the complete process to install, set up, and run Stable Diffusion 2.0 locally on a Windows PC. Now, it's not as simple as other Windows programs, but thanks to the work of lots of other people, it is still relatively straightforward. I'm going to run through it relatively quickly. I'll try and give a little bit of context as I'm going for the reason why we're doing things. First things first, in the link in the description, uh, you will see I have provided a link to Automatic 11.11. Click on that, open it in another tab, which is this tab here. Uh, this is the Stable Diffusion web UI that we'll be using to talk to Stable Diffusion to get images out of it, to put prompts into it, and all the rest of it. Um, and it also helps us an awful lot with the installation process, which is fantastic. Scroll down on this rather arcane-looking page until you get to installation and running and what we really care about here is automatic installation on windows we're actually going to be installing several different programs uh, stable diffusion itself the model needs to be installed that runs on a thing called python which is a programming language which stable diffusion was written in uh, we also are going to need a program called git which we'll get to <clears throat> And uh, then there is the web UI user interface itself, which is what will allow us to talk to the Stable Diffusion model and to send prompts to it to get images back out of it, generally to make the whole process really quite awesome and fantastic. So the first thing we need to install is Python, but this is the point at which it's easiest to get tripped up, actually, because it doesn't really make it clear, but it does say here, install Python 3.10.6, checking add Python to path. The crucial things here are add Python to path, yes, but also Python 3.10.6. If we click on the link, then it takes us through to the Python download window, and you might think, oh, okay, Python latest release, I'll just download and install that. But no, that would be wrong. That is, that is Python 3.11. We want 3.10.6, or we will get an error when we try and run the program later. So uh, you're going to need to scroll down, and slightly confusingly, it's not in... Perfect order to 3.10.6 right here. Download the Windows installer 64 bit, run it, and we want to make sure we tick add Python 3.10 to path. Click that, click install now. And that's it. Setup was successful. Python is now installed. We can close that, go back to our automatic 11.11 and continue with the next step which is install git now what is git well it is basically a tool for uh, programmers to manage and distribute the code of their projects um, and we're going to use this to basically automate the process of, of downloading and installing stable diffusion itself and various other bits and pieces that we need so click on the link install git we want to download for Windows. We can just click here to download the latest version and then run it. Yes, we want to allow it to make changes. Just click Next. We just want to leave all the options at the default. Just click all the way through. You can use whatever code editor. You're never actually going to use an editor. You can just leave this at Notepad if you, if you don't have any editors installed. Uh, just let Git decide. Yes, yes, yes. Just click next through all options and install. Okay, uh, we don't need to read the release notes or indeed launch git bash. We can just close that down. And we're now done with that page. So now we've got Python and Git both fully installed on the computer and hopefully we just never need to touch those again. They'll just run in the background whenever they're called for uh, by the rest of the process. What we next need is to install the web UI, which is this project that we're currently on. Uh, now, it doesn't have its own Windows installer or anything fancy like that, so we're going to have to download it and stick it on the computer ourselves. There's two ways we can do that. We can do it the Windowsy way, and we can do it the Git way. And the Git way is basically like being transported back to the 1980s and the cutting-edge user interface of a command line prompt. Either way we need a folder to put it in so let's just create that first so just open up your file explorer and go to i'm just going to put mine on my c drive here i'm going to put it in my tools folder and i'm just going to create a new folder so i'm going to right click new folder 
SD for stable diffusion. There we go. And so I've now got a newly created folder here on my computer in somewhere where I know where it is and how to get to it. Uh, now, the two ways that we can use to install the user interface here, the Windowsy way, the easy way, uh, we just um, scroll up to the top of this page, the same page that the, the guide is on. You see there's a button here that says code. If we click on that and then download zip. And then once that's downloaded, we just click on it to open it. Go back to our folder here. So this is the downloaded zip. This is the folder that we created. And I'm just going to open this up. I'm just going to highlight all of this. And I'm just going to drag it over here. And that's it. It's that easy to install it the Windowsy way. Um, now, if you want to be fancy and do it the Git way, we'll just do that for completion's sake. It does mean that you get to check that Git is working properly, which is always handy. So let me just delete all of this. So we'll need to run this prompt from the command line. So first we need to open up and run the command line. So it's just a CMD. If you click on the little search button, type CMD, you'll see command prompt. Click on that. Then we need to use old school. Uh, we need to go C colon for the C drive, which is where we are. We need to go CD backslash tools backslash SD, because that's the folder that we created for stable diffusion. This is why it helps to create a nice, simple, easy to remember file structure um, and then once we're here we just paste this so we can literally just copy this control C to copy back to the command prompt control V to paste and enter to run and this will then go through and basically use git to download everything into that folder and if we now go back into that folder You'll see uh, it's created a subfolder for us. It's created the Stable Diffusion Web UI subfolder. And within that, we've got basically all of our, our stuff again, once again. So that is good. Uh, either method is fine. The GitHub method, I mean, it's more programmery. Maybe uh, you'll feel cool by doing that. Um, but I personally prefer to not actually have this part in I'm, I don't know why. I just like short folder names. I don't like having this. So I'm going to take all of this and. Um, just drag it back into there anyway. So now we've copied all of these files into our Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. We're going to leave that for now and we're going to come back across to our installation instructions because the next thing we need is the model. But we don't want to actually install the model that's listed here. So the model is the it's the core of Stable Diffusion. It's the thing that actually generates the images for us. And when this was written, it's referencing the 1.4 version of the model, but 2.0 has been released. And that's what we want to install. If for whatever reason you want to go back and install the older models later, you can do. Um, but for now, we're going to deviate from these automatic installation instructions here. And we're going to scroll up just a little bit. And you can see Stable Diffusion 2.0 support. If we just click on the wiki link. So for Stable Diffusion 2.0, we need to download the 768VEMA checkpoint. Now, this is the model file. This is when we're talking about models. Clicking on that link will take you through to the Hugging Face website. I mean, it's cute, right? Hugging Face. Uh, this is basically a site for machine learning stuff, uh, models and all sorts of crazy stuff. You will need to create an account to download anything here, but it's free. So just go ahead and register an account. And then once you've done that and you've given them your email address, you should then be able to come down here. And uh, if you're on the model card page here, just click on files and versions. And what you want is the 768V EMA CKPT file. If you click on that and then click here for download, then you'll see it starts to download to your computer. Now it's a pretty chunky file. It's 4.9 gigabytes, so it could take a little while to come down. So we'll just wait for that to download and we will come back in a minute. OK, once that's downloaded, uh, just take it from wherever you've downloaded it to. In this case, it's my downloads folder here. And you want to put it into the Stable Diffusion folder that you created. So go back to the folder that you created to install the web UI to. And then we're going to click on Models and then Stable Diffusion. And then just drag and drop it in there. OK, so the next step, once we've copied that model file across, is we need to grab the config 
from uh, SD 2.0 repository and put it into the same place as the checkpoint. So just right click here and click save link as and then we want to browse to the folder that we just copied our model file into. So tools, stable diffusion, models, stable diffusion, that's where it is. And we're going to save it there and then if we just reopen this page now the next important step we need to rename this file to have the same name not excluding the extension as the checkpoint file up here so we need to change this to 768-v-ema and press enter so you've got one file 768-v-ema-ckpt and you've got another file 768 V E M A Y A M L. Good. See, a little bit programmery. But don't worry, that's like the most programmery thing, basically, that you're going to have to do. Okay, now the last step should just be to go back to your installation folder that you created for Stable Diffusion and double click the web UI user.bat. You'll get a little message pop up. Just click More Info and select Run Anyway. And it will create this little terminal window and it's going to run through a whole load of stuff that it's doing. Now, if you get any error messages here, there's a couple of things you might need to check. Check that when you installed Python, you click the path, add to path, little tick box. Uh, that's very important. Also, if you get error messages about installing uh, Torchlight or anything like that, it's possible that you've installed python version 3.11 and you can uninstall that and instead install python 3.10 otherwise this process takes a little while so you basically just need to let it run through its course and it'll do a whole load of stuff and then when it's finished hopefully we ought to be able to get into our stable diffusion And that's it. It is now running. Now this terminal window stays open as long as Stable Diffusion is running. And if you ever want to close Stable Diffusion, you can just close it with the little thing here. Um, but to actually access it, to actually do anything with it, we're going to need to connect to it using the web interface. So if you just go to any old web browser, open up a new tab and type in localhost colon seven eight six zero this is visible if you go to your little uh, tab window here you can see you could also have typed in one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one colon seven six seven eight six zero or localhost basically does the same thing and then just click enter and there you go now you have your web ui which should be familiar to anybody who's watched any of my other videos or indeed has watched any videos on stable diffusions uh, automatic 11 11 web ui at all um, we do need to load our model so we have only the one model so we just click on our drop down select the model that we want there and then i don't know a man sitting in a chair looking smug there we go uh, we need to change because we're running the 768 model you always need to remember to change uh, your width and height to 768 by 768 or you will get weird results that's just something you're going to have to do every time for the time being until an update comes along to take care of that for you and then click generate to prove that it works and there you go <laughs> here's a guy looking smug i mean he does look fairly smug to be fair he's he's even smugly in black and white like all the smuggest people are um and that's it that's how you set up and install and run stable diffusion 2.0 using the automatic 1111 web ui i hope that you didn't have any problems running through that if you did have problems like i say it could be to do with installing the wrong python version or not setting the path variable but by all means, leave a comment and I will do my best to help if I can. And that's it. Basically, it's it's all up and running. This is Stable Diffusion Web UI. You can play with it to your heart's content. You can mess around with all of the settings. I'll do a follow up video on what all of these different settings are on possibly how to install other models in case you want to play around with some of the older models and other models that are available. But that will have to wait for another video for now. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I have been Dave, the AI wizard, and I'll see you later.